Morning guys. Um, I'm a little thrown off because my camera's over here and I, I usually hold it where the camera's over here. Uh, we're gonna play a little game today. It's called Guess What Day It Is. If you guessed Friday, you are correct. If you guessed any of the other days, you are not correct. And if you guessed that it's your own birthday, you've been watching too many Disney cartoons during, <laughs> during this time. Um, I have actually written down the verse for today in my notes on my arm. <laughs> because there's no way I'm going to remember all this. Um, we did something that I highly recommend that you do. We just set up a tent in the backyard, well, my parents' backyard, and uh, lit a fire and just relaxed, and it was it was very nice. We didn't have uh, our phones. We didn't have um, any TV or anything. It was very nice. I highly recommend doing that. <laughs> it was, it was uh, there's no other way to say it except that it was very nice. Uh, today's verse is uh, in 1 Peter chapter 2. It says in verse 4, uh, As you come to him, a living stone, rejected by men, but in the sight of God, chosen and precious, you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. And he's saying a lot of different things here. And so I don't really want to go through the whole you know, book of verse Peter. Um, so we're just going to kind of keep things sim a little bit simple today. The part that I want, to, want you to pay attention to is there at the beginning it says, As you come to him, this is First Peter chapter 2, verse 4, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God chosen and precious. Now, what are we talking about? We're talking about Jesus. Um, Jesus was the way to salvation, but he was rejected by people, killed for something. He didn't even do anything wrong, and he was killed for it. And so even though he was despised by people he was still considered chosen and precious before the Father. Now, see, the, the thing about this is, okay, so we're talking about Jesus, but this, this is a way of relating to the audience because they have also been rejected by people. They're also having a hard time. Um, some of them are, are stuck in poverty and those kinds of things, not having a very good time. And so by saying, pointing out these, thing, these facts about Jesus, he's relating Jesus to them, to their situation. Hey, the same as... You have been rejected by people. Um, Jesus was too. And the same as Jesus was chosen and precious to God. So you are chosen and precious to God. It's a, it, it's, it's, so in that way, um, it, it's something that definitely does relate to all Christians. And then he kind of makes his point clear by what he says in verse 5. You yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house. But the difference being... Um, in verse 5, he's not so much pointing to the fact that we've been rejected by men, but what the purpose is of that. You yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house. See, in this life, you're, we're going to have we're gonna have problems. We're going to face struggles and different things like that. But although we will be rejected by people, by God, we're, we're, we're chosen and precious for the purpose of being built up as a spiritual house. See, Jesus is called the cornerstone. He is the root, right? And so God is using us as, similarly, as stones to build up a house on the foundation of Jesus. So what that means for us is that God is using us to reach out to others. Now, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, so let me kind of back up here. So sometimes we feel like we don't fit in. Sometimes people spread rumors and lies about us. Sometimes people reject us. All those different things. Jesus knows. He's gone through that too. So, so we are, we have a um, we have someone who can relate to our problems. Jesus wasn't just someone who says, "Oh yeah, I care. I have no idea what you're going through, but I care." He actually does know what we're going through, and he actually does care. Um, and then also, um, let me check my notes here. <laughs> Gotta just <laughs> look at my cheat my cheat notes here. Um, in verse in verse nine it says, "You, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for His own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of Him who called you out of darkness into His marvelous light." So once again, there it says, "You may claim the excellencies of Him who called you out of the dark into His marvelous light." The idea there being that we are a um, we are a testimony uh, to people, a living witness to other people, and this is what He's talking about here in verses four through five. So. I, I, I know it's kind of short, but I just wanted to keep it short to have a real simple main point. As you're going through different struggles and you're going through different things, remember that, that even when you are rejected by people, that you are chosen and precious to God and that he is using you to build up that foundation that Jesus started. 
so that we can be a a testimony of God's marvelous light in us. Now, how does this apply to us? Because right now, we're, oh, that that's an interesting idea. But here's here's my point. See, during this time, especially, we can be a beacon of hope for people. We can be a beacon a beacon of of peace, handling things well. We can take this opportunity to be a light to people. Or we can take this opportunity to, you know, vent how irritated and frustrated we are. Um, and then everybody will know your opinion, but that wouldn't have helped people to connect with the Father who, was re who, who sent the Son, who was rejected, and, um, and that. So in First, in first Peter chapter 2, we're, we're seeing a way that we can connect with Jesus in, in our sorrow in such a way that it helps us to be a light to others, especially in the hard times. And check it out. Sometimes people feel like this. I can't worship God if I don't feel like singing or whatever. Worship is more than a song. The point being, it's when you do things when you don't feel like doing them, that they mean all the more. When you stay faithful to your wife when you don't feel like staying faithful. When you worship and praise God when you don't feel like worshiping and praising God. My point being that in the midst of this stuff that's going on, it doesn't always feel like, you know, hey, God's got this, or I can trust God, or or God knows what I'm going through, or anything like that. But if we take this opportunity to to put our faith in him during this time, that doesn't mean that just because we str our faith struggled that, that we didn't have faith. That is a sign of true faith, that even though there were struggles, we still put our faith in God. And it's during those times that we become even a greater example to others of the Father's marvelous light that He's that He's put in us, that He's worked through us. So I want to encourage you: watch what you're saying, watch what you're doing during this time. Uh, remember, we are chosen and precious to to God, and that He He knew that we were going to be living through this. And who knows? Maybe He put us in this time of history for just such a time as to be a light in this darkness that we see around us. So uh, I want to encourage you: uh, keep going, don't give up. And uh, uh, Chuck will have another word for you guys. Uh, word of encouragement for you guys tomorrow, uh, which is Saturday. So uh, stay happy, guys. Stay healthy.